Okay, in this episode I want to talk about handling errors in your HTTP APIs. <clears throat> and that really covers two things, protocol standards and an application convention. So what we're really talking about is error handling on the web. And it takes a couple of things. So I'm going to talk a little bit about status codes for HTTP. Notice they're not called error codes, they're called status codes. We'll talk a little bit about application errors. These are the typical errors that any application you build, whether it's on the web or a desktop, would occur. And I'm going to spend a couple of minutes on the wrong way compared to the right way. I don't normally focus on the wrong way to do things, but I think it's important because I, I'm seeing this quite frequently. In fact, I'm going to take an example from a recent API review that we were doing. This is not the right way to do it. So notice that the status information says everything went fine with your last request, but the body of this uh, message says, no, 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 wait a minute, there was an error. This is the wrong way to do it. It's important not to mix status reporting with body information and have them say two different things. All right, so let's back up a little bit. I want to talk a little bit more about status codes. The first thing to keep in mind when you're talking about status codes is you're way, way down at the protocol level. This is at the HTTP level. So these are the codes that are used by HTTP for service and clients to understand what happened. For instance, there's the 100 series. 101, for example, is used to switch between HTTP and WebSockets. There's the 200 series, and you can see there's more than one of them. Occasionally, you might even see 206 if you get a parcel message from a server. There's the redirect series, which basically means, hey, that thing you asked for, that's now at a new location. Go ask over there. And then there's the 400 client side error. You can see there are several of them, but none of them are specific to any application. They're very much focused on the communication at the protocol level. Finally, if things really get turned around, you might end up with a 500 error, which is an error on the server. You hate to see these because there's really nothing a client can do. Uh, you have to wait until the server gets fixed. So those are status codes. Those happen on every single response. And it's important for clients to understand how to deal with them. But that's very different than application errors. So in application errors, these are things that are specific to your particular problem domain. And that's way up at the top of the stack, your application. And you need to establish a convention. For example, a common convention is to return title, description, and optionally, some kind of internal code or link to more information. Those last two items may only be sent if you're, say, a high-level user or administrator. That link might actually link to uh, dumps of memory or other things that are private. So that's a convention. And what you need to do is establish the way you send that information. For example, in an XML message, you'd return 200, 400 bad requests, which is the typical response for bad requests, and you'd return a body that had the specific information uh, that's important for the client to understand and maybe to communicate to a human. Now, it doesn't matter what format you use for this, whether it's JSON, whether you're using HTML, or even if you're just using plain text. The important thing to keep in mind is to send proper status information as well as distinct application information in the same message. And that's the way you send application errors. And it's almost always HTTP 400 as the common convention for when you're sending back general uh, things like this. So the right way, know your status codes. Know what they mean because they're going to come in handy. But be sure you establish a convention that reports application-specific information for all your errors. And then put it together in a uh, proper way. Make sure you include the protocol status information as well as the application-specific information. And that is the right way to handle errors on the web.